I hope most of you have glasses of wine, of wine in your hand as well. All right. Well, cheers, Steve, I'm ready. I love wine. <laughs> in this glass, I get some black cherries, a little bit of rose, maybe some red currant, and a hint of cocoa. What do you get? I'm sure to drink a healthy pour of wine a day. It's important for me to make sure I get all the antioxidants I need for the day and a good night's rest. Who's with me there? <laughs> Some of you might also join with me in my daily prayer and find wine as a true godsend. Lord, give me coffee to change the things I can change and wine to accept the things I can't. Like signing up for this presentation. <laughs> so you know you're a wine geek when you pair the food to the wine and not the other way around. For example, what should I pair with this 2015 barrel aged on the lease Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlborough region of New Zealand? It's a really tough choice. So now the question is, how did I become such a wine nerd? Well, it turns out that I grew up on a farm in the Midwest, um, and it developed within me a passion for agriculture, and I found vineyards to be the sexiest form of agriculture. <laughs> so while I was beginning my career at a family farm association in Washington, D.C., I found myself at an Austrian wine tasting where I met a winemaker for the first time, Franz Josef Gansbegger, or Goose for short. <laughs> Winemakers like Goose and sommeliers are certified wine geeks. They have this way of convincing anyone that a glass of wine is as equally enchanting and fantastic as the vineyards from where it came. And for a while, I fell for that. But now I see the whole picture. Winemaking, I've come to find out, is quite unsophisticated at times. I was living as a Peace Corps volunteer in Eastern Europe in the Republic of Moldova when I first tried my hand at winemaking with this old wooden press at my host family's house. They keep the process all natural here. Total e natural. After Peace Corps, I got a job in Austria. My Slovakian and Polish male coworkers were baffled by my willful desire to spend countless days in this cold, humid vineyard, stripping and pruning vines until my body ached. And come to think of it, I'm a little bit baffled myself. Uh, yet, a few years later, I had soon forgotten that torture and got a gig on a winery in New Zealand that harvests 10,000 tons of grapes each year. An essential duty was hauling long, thick hoses across the winery. It was kind of like doing CrossFit for 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Here's my flatmate Kirsty filtering and extracting a bit more color from this Pinot Noir. Even with really tired feet, the stain of wine, and perhaps the sole commitment to the grape harvest continued to pull me into this love affair with wine. How many of you have been to a wine cellar like this? With the, the ideal humid, cool conditions, the black mold is fantastic for cleaning the air, <laughs> or something like that. And it's here in this dank, dim basement where the, harvest, uh, where the work, hard work of harvest is laid to rest. But yet, within a few years, most wine resurfaces at wine expos where all have a taste and judge its value. The more you taste, the more you really can taste, I have found. I remember when I started identifying tasting notes that were then also listed on the back of the bottle. But if you're skeptical that people really can taste blossom cherry and Meyer lemon, you could just stick with a sophisticated, judgmental line from Jack in the movie Sideways. Quaffable, but far from transcendent. 
Whatever the case, perhaps the most important aspect of wine tasting is to really express what your senses are telling you. This might bring out a raw, unabated love for good wine and really only good wine, and that's okay. For others in the world, particularly in Moldova, it's not about tasting the wine at all, but about consuming it <laughs> in full glass pours with your pals from a communal tank on the back of a horse-drawn cart. <laughs> now, that would take music on Main to a new level. <laughs> so, all this to say, my relationship with wine runs deep deep into the soil, into a tank of fermenting juice, deep into a bottle of perfectly crafted wine, and deep into the romance of a remote vineyard such as this one in New Zealand. I also love how grapes can be transformed into a beverage that brings people together. As Ben Franklin once said, wine makes daily living easier, less hurried, with few tensions and more tolerance. And we could live more like that these days. So if you could with me, take time to take a deep breath, be transported for a moment to this beautiful place on the Danube. With the setting sun on your face, feel the fresh air, the stillness, and breathe in all the flavors of the wine. This is my love affair with wine. And this presentation only encouraged my love affair. As I prepared for this evening, I dreamt of new vineyards to visit. I sipped on glass after glass with every slide. And I have again fallen more deeply in love with wine. Won't you join me?